Hello and welcome. This video is one of the how to video series of Station Scout. My name is Brock. In this video, we will see how to test our SCADA design, basically HMIs and RTUs, without having any physical IEDs with Station Scout. So let's have a look on our system under test before starting the test. As you see, this is a typical substation utilizing IC6150 for glues and reports. So on the upper side, you will see the clients of the substation, such as a local HMI and a gateway for protocol conversion of signals to be transmitted to control center over 104. So in our setup today, we have a local HMI running on a PC and a station scout running on MBX and controlled by another PC. So station scout is simulating all the IEDs in the substation to test if they are sending the correct signals to HMI and HMI is using the correct addresses of the signals to process, visualize and log. So the assessment here can be made visually by observing the necessary pace of the HMI. Finally, Station Scout will give a test report for documentation purposes and also you will be able to save the same test plan for FAT and SAT as well as after firmware updates and during maintenance tests to execute instantaneously. So how will we create the test case? As you're familiar with the user interface of the Station Scout, simply we go to the IED where the signals are contained and click on the plus icon in the test case tab. Then there will be another window popping up. And now here we select signal test, which is our aim in this video. After that, we have simply three steps to run every type of signals to be tested. We can import our signal list with the names in any language, or we can alternatively push some signals from the IED overview. So I will prefer in this example, the importing method for ease of use. Then Station Scout will automatically create for you the test steps to be executed. You can modify the test steps according to your needs. You can add or remove some of the test steps or the signals. Then, as we are used to from Omicron products, to run the test is just a click to the play button. And now, as last step, we will check the reaction of our HMI in the corresponding page, like LEDs of pay page in this picture. In the same manner, we can test all different signals to verify the communication and correct addressing in different pages, such as mimic diagram of the HMI. And moreover, you can also check the command direction if it's working correctly by issuing some commands from HMI to Station Scout. Last but not least, as mentioned, you can check different assessment destinations, such as single line diagram, enunciation LEDs on the HMI, or event logs and alarms. Okay, so after this introduction, we can now switch to our test setup and run the test set. So I started with loading the SCL file and now you can see the entire substation in the zero line diagram. So it's a big substation around 70 IEDs. So as you can imagine, the scenario is now I'm at the office with my HMI and writing my first test to check my HMI design. To create a test case, for this purpose, I click on the IED that I want to create a test plan. So then clicking on the plus icon and select signal test. Now, as we are working with the simulated IEDs, I should select the option of simulate signals. Then here comes the part of adding signals. So there are two ways to add signals to the test case. The first way is I can select some signals from the IED overview. Like I click here some groups that I want to push some signals out of that like signal here and I can select the mode or I can go back and select another group like interlocking and push enable open signal here. Yeah. So the first way is like this and alternatively I can use add from signal list button to add signals from a signal list. To do so I click on it and now I switch to my signal list. So in my signal list here, which contains 6850 addresses and the names of the signals, that means I can also take the signal names in the, in the local language to visualize them with my custom names in the Station Scout project. 
and then I see the names become clearer. So if I click on some signals like this, copy it and then paste it to here and click on add and now the signals appeared here. So now I can go to the next step. Next step is called test steps. So here you see Station Scout is offering a predefined test steps to be generated for me. So you see that all different statuses uh, for different data types are offered. For instance, for enumerated values, we have all the statuses. These are defined. For single point signals, we have a false true false cycle. For positions, we offer starting from closed and ending up with closed again. So please notice that we always finalize the last step as the same with the first step to go back to the initial state. This will help you later on for ease of notice which equipment is tested and which is not yet tested. You can deselect some of the statuses that you don't want to test as per your requirement. In the execution tab, we have only one option that station scores offers to set the values automatically, which means each state change will be made automatically by station scout to help saving time during the test. And now we can click on finish setup to review our test case. If you want to add additional steps, you can add in between the test steps via hovering between the steps and then you will see a plus icon appears. So let's assume that we want to add another test step here. I click on the plus icon. Now I select another value here and I click always set expected values. Now I can go back and I see that the test block, the new test step has been added. And I also noticed that there is a red asterisk, which means that this test step is modified by the user, it's added. You can also delay some test steps if you want by clicking on the step and then clicking on the task icon here. So for the analog values, if you want to test, we can also add uh, some analog value. So go back to the measurements of the IED again. So select an analog value like synchronization voltage running so I can add this also to test step you see that it appears here and finish the setup again but before that you will see that numeric signals also appear we don't offer any numeric signals but if you want to add some desired values you can also do that via clicking on the plus icon and setting some different values like 400 kV and again clicking on the set expected values. Now if I go back to test case setup and scroll down all the way, then you will see that a value with 400 volts or kilovolts have been added. So okay, now we can go online and run the test sets. Now we can start going online and start the simulation and run the test cases that are already prepared. So for starting the simulation in this system, basically I can click on the substation, the entire substation, and on the right hand side I have the simulation slider. I will click on it to switch it to the enabled. And now I have the opportunity to deselect some of the IEDs which I don't want to simulate. In this case, I don't want to simulate the uh, HMI, which is the main server here. I deselect this one, and other than that, I don't need to deselect any IED. So this means that all the IEDs here have been prepared for simulation. So here I have the opportunity to send the goose with simulation flag if I'm in a live energized substation, not to affect primary equipment, but this is not the case for us now. And now I can go online. You know that when to go live, you have the live status slider here. And for doing that, you need an IP address in the same range of the substation that you have. So I already filled it out. And 
This also saved in the ACC file when you save it. And then I can click on it simply to start the simulation. And on the right hand side, I have the ES Agile system and it waits for me to go online. And then when I go online, you will notice that already some positions will become available because of the simulation has started for some days and some base are still continuing. And you can see the status here on the very bottom of Station Scout that it's the 23 now going on out of 67 IEDs to be simulated. Okay, so this shows us a hint that which IEDs we expect to see, the positions and all the other signals which are communicating out to the SCADA and when the HMI system comes online and we can switch to the single line diagram which is the general overview of the HMI that shows us all the base and all the positions within the base so now you see that some of the base have the valid positions taken from the station scout online and some of the base have not still appeared then therefore you see them with the question marks which means the invalid status of this base and switch so i think it's just one bay left yeah that's also fine so now you see all the switch positions are available here i can also check the this connector for example i can send a command from this connector to the station scout so for doing that, I click on the disconnector and I select it. So when I click on operate, you will see that 89L will be opened. Okay, so it will be it's open now. Okay, with this way, we can test all the positions and I prepare the test case to test this. So it's the mimic diagram which will be tested now. So this is this one and I click on this test and let's have a look on the test case what we prepared here so I see that it's the circuit breaker positions the single phase ones it has a closed open closed cycle and the circuit breaker the three phase position it has all the possible statuses and you can have also yeah delay some of them or add the ones that you want to test it's all possible as we mentioned before and 89a which is the disconnector here you can see it 89a is closed here and also we have some icons that represents the interlocking release signals and with these icons we can also test with single point status symbols so to run the test i just click on the execute test case and observe from the hmi screen so now I see that the circuit breaker phase A is closed. I see also here A, B, C. These are the single position phases of the circuit breaker. It's closed. So I will follow a closed open closed cycle. And you see that the screen now it's open. Okay. Now phase A is closed and I see that it's closed again. So in the phase B I see that it's closed. Yes, that's true. Now it should be open. That's fine. And it's closed. One after other, we can imagine that all the switch positions will be red that shows us they are tested. And at the end, I will have the mm, mimic diagram all the closed positions. That would mean that I tested each and every position. And when you have a bad state position in this reaction matrix of the HMI, I map this to receive an alarm for that and I receive this alarm that means I can have also multiple destinations like the first destination to check would be the mimic diagram the second one would be alarm and you can also have um, some more to check the event log if you want to check you can check all and you can enter a command with that so I can enter a command like single line diagram checked or you can say ok and the bay overview Okay, the alarm, okay. So with that, you can have these commands in your test report. So now I say passed 
and it's back again to its closed position, so it's okay for me. So now I'm switching to this interlocking permissive symbol or icon. Now it's false and click on pass and now it's true and now it's false again. Okay, so this works well. So I think we come to the end of our test. We can now export a test report for documentation purposes. Click on the IED and on the right hand side you will see the export test report button. When you click export test report button, this will create a test report containing all the necessary details that you need, such as signal names, the timestamps, and the values at the test report. So after that, you can copy this test report to clipboard, and then you can paste it to a text editor or any application that is accepting the HTML data. So it can be a Microsoft Word, for example. So if I paste this test report to Microsoft Word, then I see the contents of the report and also then and the navigated headings for easy reach. And now I can switch to my next test, which is the, yeah, let's say, the, let's test the metering values. So metering values, you can see some yeah, strange values here. These are the already prepared or the actual status here. But I prepared the test case for current of A, B, C, following the face-to-face -face voltages and then some active power, reactive power, frequency. So just to show you the all different possibilities that in the in this small small diagram to be tested. So now we can start testing our metering values. So now the phase A current should be zero. Now I see that it's zero. Now I can say that it should be 100. Yes, that's true. With that, you can test all your values. I will not go into go further, it's the same, nothing different. But this is just showing you how to test the metering values. All right, so we have more or less all the tests that possible, that's possible in this BCU. Now we can switch to the um, protection signals in this bay. So for that, I click on this protection signals. This is another IED and we also have the fault distance here. Okay. I also added this and I have the protection LEDs and whenever we want we can switch to alarm overview to see the values. So this is the alarm overview, the annunciator that to check if the signals are also mapped to the annunciator values. Okay, let's go back to bay overview and now we start the test with fault distance. Now it should be zero. Yes, that's true. Now it should be 100 kilometer now it should be 23.25 so now I catch that we don't have the yeah, nothing more than the decimal values so it doesn't support any more yeah, values than the decimal values here okay that's a finding for me and now I have the differential operated as false now I expect to have it as true okay so Maybe we can also check in the in the line differential. So now it's working. Fault distance now we can see in the event log. So we can take some notes on that uh, or we can move on. So now I see that differential operated LED is false. So this can move on like this. And I hope you enjoy testing with stations code.